Hey everyone, my name is Sean Luce, Technical Marketing Engineer for Azure NetApp Files. Persistent storage allows stateful applications to run on Kubernetes without losing data when pods or containers are terminated. Persistent storage also enables applications to scale up and down without affecting performance or availability. With Azure NetApp Files, all of the pods that make up an application can have access to the same highly available and highly performant storage volume. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Azure Kubernetes Service and Azure NetApp Files while deploying persistent storage volumes dynamically using Astra Trident. Before we dive in, let's quickly review the steps we'll be covering in this video. We'll start by deploying an Azure Kubernetes Service cluster. We'll then create an Azure NetApp Files delegated subnet. We'll install Astra Trident. We'll then configure and deploy the Astra Trident backend for Azure NetApp Files. We'll create a persistent volume claim, or PVC. And finally, we'll create and deploy an Nginx HTTP web server backed by persistent storage. I have provided all of the JSON and YAML files used in this video in this GitHub repo. I'll put the link in the video description or you can scan the QR code here. Let's dive in. The first step is to create an Azure Kubernetes Service cluster. From within the Azure portal, navigate to Kubernetes Services and select Create. Choose your resource group. For the preset, I am choosing Dev Test to keep costs down. Give your cluster a name. Select a region. For best performance, this will be the same region where you deploy Azure NetApp files. Click Next and leave the node pools as the default. For networking, I am leaving the default as KubeNet. With this option, Azure takes care of creating the networking components for you, including the VNet. For production environments, you will probably choose Azure CNI to have more control over the networking components that get created. Click through integrations onto Advanced. Here, you are going to provide the resource group for the networking components that get created with the cluster. Finally, click Next to apply any tags as required, and then click Next, and finally click Create. Within a few minutes, your AKS cluster is ready to go. Navigate to your new AKS cluster and click the Connect button. Paste these two commands one at a time into your Cloud Shell terminal. You are now connected to your new cluster. We are using Cloud Shell as it already includes AZ CLI, kubectl, and Helm which will all be used later in this video. Now that you are connected, the next step is to install Astra Trident. There are a few different ways to install Trident. In this example, we'll use Helm. We'll first add the Helm repo. And next, we'll use the Helm install command to install Astra Trident into our Kubernetes cluster. You can interact with Astra Trident using Trident CTL or kubectl. In this example, we are going to use Trident CTL. To get Trident CTL, use wget to grab the latest Trident installer package from GitHub. Once extracted, you should have a folder called Trident-Installer that contains Trident CTL. Now that we have Astra Trident installed, let's configure our VNet by creating an Azure NetApp Files delegated subnet. Navigate to the VNet that was created when you deployed your AKS cluster. Click on Subnets, and then add a new subnet. Give your subnet a name. I am keeping the default size of slash 24. Under Subnet Delegation, make sure to select Microsoft.NetApp slash Volumes. Now that we have all of the infrastructure in place, let's create our first Astra Trident backend. The backend tells Astra Trident how to authenticate with the Azure NetApp Files service and also sets some defaults for how we want our volumes to be created. 
As you can see, this JSON file defines our Astra Trident backend. It contains our service principal credentials and some other configuration details, such as mount options, eligible capacity pools, the VNet and subnet that we want our ANF volumes deployed to, just to name a few. For a complete list of parameters, please take a look at the Astra Trident documentation. Now that we have our backend JSON file defined, we'll use the Trident CTL create backend command to create our backend. Next, we'll define our storage class. The storage class is referenced as part of our persistent volume claim and tells Kubernetes to use the Azure NetApp files storage driver if it receives a claim for this storage class. Once you have the storage class manifest defined, use kubectl apply to create the storage class. Next, we'll define our persistent volume claim, or PVC. This PVC is used by our deployment as persistent storage for our application. Within this manifest, we can define the access mode and set the size of our volume. Use kubectl apply to create the PVC. If everything is configured correctly, you should see that a new Azure NetApp files volume has been provisioned by Astra Trident. Use kubectl get PVC to see the name of the new volume. Let's go confirm that the ANF volume has been created. From within the Azure portal, navigate to your capacity pool and confirm the volume has been created. Now, let's create our deployment. We are going to define an Nginx web server with our Azure NetApp files volume mounted to slash user slash share slash Nginx slash HTML. This is the default location where Nginx serves web pages from. What we are doing is mounting persistent storage, in this case, Azure NetApp files volume that will live on even if this application gets destroyed and or redeployed. Notice here that we are defining our volume mount point and referencing the persistent volume claim that we created in the previous step. Now that we have defined our deployment, let's go ahead and use kubectl apply to deploy our Nginx web server. Use kubectl get deployment to see our new deployment. Use kubectl get pods to see the pod that makes up our deployment. kubectl describe pod along with your pod name will show the details of that pod. Notice under events, we can see that our PVC was mounted to the pod. And here under mounts, we can see where our volume was mounted. At this point, our Nginx web server doesn't have a public IP address. We'll fix that by using the kubectl expose deployment command. This will give our Nginx web server a public facing IP address using the built-in Azure Load Balancer service. After a few minutes, use kubectl get svc and we can now see that the Azure Load Balancer has given our Nginx web server a public IP address. Your public IP address will be different than the one shown. If you point your browser to your public IP address, you will likely get an error as we haven't yet put any content into our Azure NetApp files volume. Let's add an index.html file to the root of our web server. Nginx requires that the HTML folder has the permissions of 755. We can use the chmod command to change these permissions, or we can set them at the time of volume creation as part of the backend definition. In this example, we are using kubectl exec to execute a command on our running pod to set the permissions to 755. Next, let's create a sample index.html file. You can use the sample file in the GitHub repo or create your own. 
Once you have your index.html file created, use kubectlcp to copy the file to the HTML folder on the running pod. Now we can point our web browser at our public IP address and see our cool new web application. You have now deployed an Nginx web server running on Azure Kubernetes service backed by an Azure NetApp Files volume that was dynamically provisioned by Astro Trident. Thanks for watching. For more information on Azure NetApp Files and Azure Kubernetes service, check out learn.microsoft.com or scan the QR code below.